I wonder if the gospel was specially chosen for the memorial of St. Martin de Porres, which we are celebrating today. It speaks about bringing in the poor and the crippled, the blind and the lame, to the banquet of the kingdom of God. St. Martin de Porres seems to have taken very seriously this parable in his life. If we refer to the mixture of Spanish and native blood in the Philippines as mestizo, in Latin America, the mixture between the Spanish and the blacks was called mulatto, like Martin de Porres. He was a mulatto. He had a Spanish father and a black mother. And it was most likely the reason why he could not be admitted as a full-fledged religious or ordained as a priest. During those times, purity of blood, in Spanish, limpieza de sangre, was one of the strict criteria for admission to the religious life in most of the Spanish religious orders. It was also for the same reason that no native vocations were accepted in the religious orders in the Philippines during the first three centuries of Christianity in our country. The Filipino Dominican Church historian, Father Rolando de la Rosa, OP, has written eloquently about this racist character of the 17th century Spanish religious orders. It was not until almost the beginning of the 20th century already that they finally got rid of this shameful racist profiling as a criterion for eligibility to the religious life and the ordained ministries of the church. Martin de Porres entered as a donado or a lay helper and later as a lay brother and assigned to do the most menial tasks in the monastery, including cleaning the latrines or the toilets of the olden times. But since Martin had some skills in paramedical care, he was later assigned to the monastery's infirmary. And there, he applied his diagnostic skills and the herbal remedies that he learned from his black mother to his ministry in the infirmary, which he extended to the wretched poor among the natives in the streets of Peru, in Lima. The streets of the city of Lima in Peru, despite the resistance that he met with the superiors. One time, he was reprimanded for violating monastic rules and using the resources of the monastery in taking care of the natives who were sick. You know what he said to the superior? He said in answer, apologizing, forgive my mistake, Father Superior. Please be kind enough and instruct me. I did not know that the rule of obedience took precedence over the rule of charity. And I think the superior was dumbfounded. Martin de Porres also got involved in the ministry of pastoral care of the slaves who were brought in by galleons from Africa. I imagine what it must have been like for Martin de Porres to be seeing his fellow blacks chained like animals and being traded like goods to supposedly civilized European Christians. I would not be surprised if Martin had read about the early 16th century Dominicans like Bartolomé de las Casas who had boldly defended the rights 
of the natives and had publicly denounced the slave trade as inhuman and unchristian. Not only did Martin de Porres care for human beings, he was known to extend his care to animals too. It was told that he was the only one who could get the dogs and the cats and the mice to eat together from one plate without fighting each other, fighting with each other. And since he was a very saintly man who hardly ever did anything wrong, a friar asked him one time, how come he was still doing a lot of penance? What sins are you doing penance for, Brother Martin? He asked. And you know what he said? He said, for slavery, for all the scorn heaped on the poor and the natives, and all the injustice in a supposedly Christian society. St. Martin de Porres was canonized by Pope John the Twenty-Third in 1962, and he was named the patron saint of those who work for social justice. Like I said, St. Martin took today's gospel parable very seriously. He believed that the day would come when the wretched ones in the very unjust society in which we live would one day be vindicated by God and would partake of the banquet of the kingdom of God ahead of all who had been invited. Well, since we started this reflection with a Latin American, perhaps we can end with another Latin American, but this time of the 20th century. Her name is Gabriela Mistral. She was a poet from Chile, also a mixed native and Spanish blood, but she was the first woman ever to receive a Nobel Prize in literature. She wrote a poem about a man who was looking for a good image of Christ in a religious store, parang Catholic Trade Center. The man was offered different types of Christ images, some made of wood, some made of plaster and marble, but he was not pleased with them. And he said, he wanted a Christ image that was as close as possible to the real Jesus of Nazareth. Here is my English translation of the last few verses of the poem entitled, Busco la Imagen de Cristo. And the last part is the answer of the religious store owner. He said, you will not find in this shop the Nazarene whom you, whom you seek. Go, look for him outside in the streets, among the homeless, among the orphans, among the sick who are dying in the hospitals, among the homes where, abandoned elderly, ab where they abandon elderly people, in the city corners, in the margins, among the hungry children, the abused women, among the jobless people. Do not look for him in a museum or on statues mounted on pedestals inside temples. Follow his steps, not in processions. You won't find him in wooden, in the wooden, or the bronze or the plaster images. Find him instead among the poor. They are his icons in flesh and bones. And I think 
That is what St. Martin de Porres did. Jesus na aking kapatid, sa lupa nami bumalik. Iyong mukha ibang iba, hindi kita nakikilala. Tulutan mo ng aking mata, mamulat sa katotohanan. Ikaw po ang makikilala sa taong mapagkumbaba. Jesus na aking kapatid, butikin man ang iyong sabi, umipunit ang iyong dami. Ika'y mapasa akin Tulutan mong aking mata Mamulat sa katotohanan Ikaw po ang makikilala Sa taong mapagpumbaba Jesus na aking kapatid, sa bukit ka nagtatanin. O sa palengke di naman, ikaw ay nakahanap buhay. Tulutan mong aking mata, mamulat sa katotohanan. Ikaw po ang Sa ta.